my life. In my I will be done. If you any cash, anybody like that here? Yeah, any yeah, penny. Let me hear you say it loud and clear. <laughs> That every one of you from now on you will begin to excel. Amen. Who is the one fellow that you will stand beside him or her and say, You are the one who will get my attention? Redemption Way. The Lord is going to surprise someone here tonight. Join Pastor E.A. Adeboye and other men of God every first Friday of the month as they lead multitudes of worshippers to the presence of God in the monthly Holy Ghost service at the Redemption Camp, kilometer 46, Lagos Ibada Expressway, from 6.30 p.m. to dawn. You're watching Redemption Way. Don't, 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 don't,
serving the God of miracles. I know, yes, I know. We are serving the God of miracles. I know, yes, I know. Hallelujah. Mighty God, our Lord, our Lord, Mary. Ancient of days, the Lord of hosts, the one who had never lost a battle, the conqueror of Pharaoh, the great physician. The great deliverer, the great provider, the I am that I am, the unchangeable Lord, the rock of ages, the holy one of Israel, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the way, the truth, and the life. Glory be to your holy name. Father, glory be to your holy name. Tonight we have asked you for mercy. Every one of us here tonight be merciful unto us. Almighty God, be merciful unto us. Lay your mighty healing hands on every one of us tonight in Jesus' name. Don't let anybody live here unhealed tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you, Almighty God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. I want you to shake hands with two or three people. And tell them because my God reigns all will be well because my God reigns all will be well and then put your hands together for the Almighty and then you may please be seated. Jeremiah chapter 8. 
Verses 21 and 22. Jeremiah 8. Verse 21 and 22 verses. For the hurt of the daughter of my people, I am hurt. I am black, astonishment has taken hold on me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? One of the reasons why I know all is going to be well with you is because the, this particular passage says any time a child of God suffers, God himself suffers. When you suffer pain, it partakes of it. That's why I know that tonight, every pain in your body will disappear in Jesus' name. I want to thank God for medical doctors. May God bless them all. They can do quite a lot with the human body. But they are limited in ability, limited in knowledge. There's a, a stage where they will say, sorry sir, there's nothing more we can do. One of the worst news that you can ever receive is for your doctor to say, there's nothing more we can do. Or they can tell you, we can't cure this, we can only manage it. But thank God there is a God. There is a God in heaven who is unlimited. Unlimited in power, unlimited in wisdom, unlimited in ability. That God is here tonight and is going to heal somebody. If you are that one, let me hear you say amen. Everything in you that is not put there by God, everything that you are not born with, will disappear in Jesus' name. Even if you were born with it, the one who made you can remake you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, there will be complete healing for everybody here tonight. He was a 
Because there is a balm in Gilead. Dr. can heal bodies. I want doctor. But my God can cure the incurable. He can cure the absolutely helpless. And it doesn't matter how long the sickness, the disease have been there. In John chapter 5, verse 2 to 9. John 5, verse 2 to 9. John 5, verse 2 to 9. The man by the pool of Bethesda has been there for 38 years. But one day his day came. The great physician paid him a visit. Your day has come today. The great physician will visit you in Jesus' name. The one who can cure the incurable will cure you tonight. He can cure you physically. He can heal you mentally. Solomon said, I want wisdom. Solomon, we pay more for your bank. Almighty God said, You've got it. Anyone who has any problem, any mental problem here tonight, my God will heal you in Jesus' name. He can heal emotionally. All he needs to do is speak to what is causing the sorrow. In Luke chapter 7, verse 11 to 15. Luke 7, verse 11 to 15. Luke he said to the widow who was going to bury her only son, he said, weep not. Why? Because he uprooted the mountain that was causing her sorrow. Everything that is causing you sorrow here tonight. We went here tonight in Jesus' name. He can heal financially. Because some people are sick financially. It is the sickness financially that is causing the sickness, mentally that is causing the sickness, physically. The one who owns the earth and the fullness thereof will heal you even financially tonight. It can heal maritally. Because the sickness of some people here tonight is marital sickness. Loneliness can kill. Barrenness can cause so much sorrow that there's the fellow will be alive and be as if he's not alive. Even God said, 
It's not good that a man should be alone. If God says it is not good, then it is bad. A lot of you who are sick maritally. Whose marriage is about to break up. Who have no peace in their home. I want you to be a lafia or show one. You know, my God will heal you maritally tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. A lot of me, you were a son of a baby. I will allow you to call Jesus Christ. He can heal spiritually. Oh, they were a son in me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. The Lord said there's someone here tonight. He said every form of begging. Whether directly or indirectly. Will cease in your life from tonight. Your father. Thank you, Lord. The Lord said there's someone here. Ask me to tell you. The internal bleeding has stopped. The internal bleeding has stopped. Mm -hmm. He said I should tell someone here tonight. I have proved myself to you before. I will do so again tonight. He can heal you spiritually. It doesn't matter how many demons are troubling you, you can deal with all of them. In Mark chapter 5, verse 1 to 15. Mark 5, verse 1 to 15. Mark 5, verse 1 to 15. The madman of Gadara had 6,000 6, demons in him. One word from the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the man was free. Many times when somebody is sick, and he goes to the hospital, and they do all the tests, and they can't find anything wrong. Might be demons behind the scene. Demons don't show up on X-ray machine. But they cannot escape the X-ray of the Almighty. Every evil force behind your sickness. My Father will deal with it tonight in Jesus' name. But the question tonight is Why are we not healed? He said, Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? As God lost his power to heal, is Jesus no longer in the healing business? 
Why are there so many Christians who are sick? See why why I know that during this Congress all is going to be well. Whatever is hindering our miracle, God will expose them. Amen. The reason why many of us are sick. And we, some of us have prayed and nothing had happened. It's because we have not satisfied the conditions for the healing. Physically, Exodus 15, verse 26. Exodus 15, verse 26. Almighty God said, if you will hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, to observe and to do all that I command you. He said, I will not even allow sickness to come near you at all. He said, because I am the Lord that he let thee. If you will hearken diligently. To observe and to obey. To observe and to do. All that he commands you. You won't even know what is called sickness. That's what he says. His word is forever settled. He is an unchangeable Lord. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Take one of his commandments. He said, The new commandment. Give I unto you. That you love one another. A new commandment I give unto you. That you love one another. He didn't say hate one another. Some of us are sick because we have hatred. We have bitterness. We refuse to forgive. Or when we forgive, we refuse to forget. Some of us don't need anybody to pray for us. All we need to do is forgive. Of told you the story before. Of a man who just began to swear. He just started swelling. And he went to the hospital. The doctors checked everything. They said, sir, there's nothing wrong with you. Everything we check is okay. 
You said there's nothing wrong with me, and I'm getting bigger by the day. So he went to the man of God for prayers. And as the man of God was about to pray, God spoke. Tell him to get rid of bitterness to forgive the fellow who had offended him that he said he would never forgive. And the man of God said, who is that fellow? What had that fellow done? And he told the story. He had only one daughter. Because the, 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 the wife died when giving birth to that daughter. So he loved that one daughter like life. Then one day one young man came and said, I want to marry your daughter. So of course I can't marry her, so you are welcome. But please take good care of her. Because she's what I'm living for. And the young man promised I uh, will take good care of her. But from day number one, after they got married, he started abusing her, beating her. On one occasion, he even fired a gun at her. Before the girl ran home to her father. And the man said, I will never forgive this boy. It wasn't long after that that he began to swear. Man of God said, you have to forgive or else we just bust one day. So he went to, to that in-law to go and make peace. And he knocked at the door. And the in-law opened the door, saw him, he tried to slam the door because he thought this man had come to kill him. But he said, no, he forced his way in. So I've not come, I've not come to fight. I've come to ask you to forgive me. And the two hugged. And while they were hugging, something fell on the ground. The wedding ring of this man who had been expanding. Because while they were hugging, he suddenly went back to normal size. So quickly that the ring fell off. Whatever is standing between you and your healing, the Almighty God will reveal to you tonight. You want physical healing? God said, you must obey his commandments. You want material healing? Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 and 2. Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 and 2. Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 and 2. God says, 
If you will hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, to observe and to do all that He commands you, blessings will be pursuing you and overtaking you. What are His commandments? Give, and you shall be given. When you give, give cheerfully. Stop robbing God. Pay your tithes. Honor him with your first fruits. Obey his commandments. Financial healing will come. You want victory all around? Deuteronomy 28. Verses 1 and 7. Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 and 7. Deuteronomy Obey me. Then all those who rise up against you will be smitten before your face. You won't even have to fight them. He will fight them for you. You want spiritual health? You want to grow spiritually? You want the power of the Almighty God to do miracles, signs, and wonders? Hebrews 1 verse 9. Hebrews 1 9. If you love righteousness, and you hate iniquity. He said, God, even your God, we are not with the all of gladness above your fellows. Everything boils down to one word. Holiness. Be holy. You'll be healthy. Be holy. You will prosper. Be holy. There will be peace in your home. Be holy. You'll be promoted. Be holy. And the devil will stay away from you. But then more importantly, The reason why many of us are still sick. Oh, thank you, Almighty God. Thank you. Amen and amen. The Lord said, There's someone here tonight. He said, From now on, I will not permit any evil report concerning you. More importantly, why some of us are still sick? Apart from deviating from the word of the Lord, disobeying his commandments, harboring bitterness, living in unforgiveness. Toying with his rules and regulations. Apart from all this, from which I'm sure you will repent if you haven't done so tonight, is that we have not prayed enough. I I will give you just three examples quickly so that we can go ahead and pray. 
In Mark chapter 5, verse 25 to 34. Mark 5, verse 25 to 34. The woman with the issue of blood. They didn't come to Jesus first. We tried the doctors. When they failed her. When she knew that there's no more plan B. <laughs> she said, I will come to Jesus. When she arrived, there was a crowd. In the past, when there was plan B, she would have said, let me go to another doctor. This man, there are too many people around him. Let me go to another doctor. Then when all doctors have failed, she said, no crowd is going to stop me this time. She pressed forward, pressed forward, pressed forward. She just kept on pressing forward until she got what she wanted. Many of us pray for five minutes and we believe, well, if God doesn't answer, I, I go and check Dr. Swanso. God is not your messenger. He's the king of kings. You are the one who wants something from him. Don't you know how many hours you queue up at the American Embassy when you want visa? Some people sleep overnight so that they can be on the line. You get there by 6 a.m. There are 200 people ahead of you. And you wonder how? How did you come so quickly? And you stand on the queue for four hours only to be told that they have taken all they want to take for that day. And you come back the following day. And when you want something from the most high, you queue for five minutes and you say, that's enough. But tonight is the night. I didn't hear you say amen. Let me give you another example. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 to 3. Matthew 8, verse 1 to 3. A leper came unto him. And said, I know you, I know you can make me clean. Nobody else can do it, but I know you can. I'm in your hand now. These people, this crowd, they have seen me, a leper, come into the crowd. They've seen me now. My secret is out. 
If you don't do something about my case now, these people will begin to stone me very soon. I throw myself at your mercy. And God granted his request. He will grant your request tonight in Jesus' name. Probably the most exciting of the stories is in Mark chapter 2, verse 1 to 12. Mark 2, verse 1 to 12. They brought a man paralytic to Jesus. They came because they knew he's a great physician. But when they arrived, several people had come before them. They have jammed the house, jammed the windows. And they looked at one another. What do we do now? Shall we go back home? Shall we carry our problem back home? We said, no way. That today is today. They climbed the roof. How long did it take them? It's not easy to carry a sick man all onto the roof of a house. They didn't climb the stairs. Because the stairs are inside, they, they climb the roof. They climb from outside. And they got there and they began, they began breaking the roof open. How long did it take them? We are not told. They did lower this man to the presence of Jesus Christ. We are not even told who repaired the roof. These people couldn't care less. They had only one mission. We must come in contact with Jesus today. I want you to come to Christ today with a strong determination. That today will be your day. And before you leave here, you will be able to say, All is well. So let us clear the way by asking those of you who are yet to surrender your life to Jesus Christ to come and do so now. Let his blood wipe away our sins so that sin will not stop us from getting our healing. Let us 
because there's nothing wrong upstairs. Isaiah 59 verses 1 and 2. Isaiah 59 verses 1 and 2. He said the hand of God is not shortened. That he cannot see. His ears are not heavy. That he cannot hear. You know what that means? It's as powerful as he had ever been. His healing power is as available today as it was ever before. He said, but your sin, your sin, your iniquity is the one separating between you and him. So if you want to surrender your life to Jesus, that his blood may wipe away your sins, or you're a backslider and you want to return to the Almighty God for restoration, come very quickly now. I'm going to count from one to five. Be sure you are standing before me before I say five. And you have to hurry because the rest of us want to pray. The power of God is available here tonight to heal. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, come very quickly. One, once your sins are gone, healing will come. The power of God is still there. It can still cure the incurable. You have the testimony yourself. It's still in the healing business. But your sins can separate between you and him. Come very quickly. This is your day of salvation. Come quickly. And those of you who are coming, hurry up, hurry up. I want to pray for salvation very soon. So hurry up quickly. Call on him, Father, save my soul. Have mercy on me. Cleanse me in your blood. Everything that can stand between me and your healing power. Let your blood wash it away. And I will serve you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, Baba, you are the Savior of mankind. Thank you for the power that is in your blood. That blood that cleanses from all sins. Let it wash everybody here today clean in Jesus' name. All these your children who have come forward tonight, please save their souls tonight in Jesus' name. Write their names in the book of life. And from this moment onward, when they call on you, answer them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. There is a redeemed Christian church of God very close to you. Join them for a life-changing experience in worship.
join us on this same station at this time next week for another wonderful experience as Pastor E.A. Adeboye exposes the deep mysteries in the Word of God.